ebb.org for all the details. Brookline Porch Fest, I don't have to tell you that this is free, will be on Saturday, June 8th with a kickoff event at the Brookline Library at noon. Porches all over Brookline will be alive. And um, uh, thanks a lot for watching. And as again, uh, if this is the first time you're watching this program, again, I want to present, you know, my view as an Asian female uh, to explain, you know, the language theory. Because I think, you know, uh, instead of family trees, we should look at language family as, you know, a one big uh, or organism like the basket starfish. I'm going to start my slideshow uh, now and today I'm actually going to talk a little bit about uh, how the ancient brought reality into writing and the concept uh, of the reality how it is uh, shown in writing itself okay so um, here we go First of all, I have to show you uh, the uh, shape of the basket starfish, and this is it. And um, as I said, you know, this is the same core, common core that we share. And uh, I do not believe that, you know, we are separate uh, family trees, and each one of us should be just uh, a branch of the same uh, core, from the same core. Because as long as we believe we are separate tree families and uh, we will usher in human hierarchy, I think this will, uh, this view needed to be changed and um, again uh, this is uh, something I was talking about uh, last week about total immersion uh, by the ancients and this is what I uh, try to recreate this is an abandoned you know ancient Jewish mosque uh, um, temple I should say in the Yemeni uh, village uh, when I was there so when I go in you try to look at it for one second Yes, you feel the quietness and you actually see the light and that's why I always uh, I also propose to switch off the light so you'll be able to see more lights so this is how the ancients because they spend a lot of time in darkness seeing uh, the contrast of light and darkness they actually come to realize a lot of things that we don't see under this electric lights so um uh, having a look at those, you know, you will understand how the ancient come up with a lot of different uh, concepts. First of all, I, I have to introduce a word that I also uh, newly learned. It's called exaptation. It is actually uh, explanation as the shift in the function of a trait, you know, during evolution. How does it shift? Is it uh, it's just like exactly the same thing when I stayed in the temple, when I see the light flowing down, it actually uh, easily transcribed into the flow of water from a source, or the, of course, you know, the flow of light from the, the sun. So something is more uh, the sun, the other one is a watery source, and the other thing can also be transcribed is uh, the uh, threads that comes down, you know, from an origin. Uh, all the symbols actually become part of the ancient writing. The first one you see right here is actually an ancient Chinese writing. The sound of it is fong and, and you can understand it uh, as a Latin font, just like the spring, just like the water source. And then the other one is closely related to giving birth as you can see. That's why a lot of the ancient pay a lot of attention to the threads they are wearing. If you have uh, watched the past episodes that I, I talked about, uh, the the thread you will see that a lot of ancient culture pay a lot of attention to the threads and the tassels that they are wearing like the Jewish religion the, the, the Hindus and, and also you know of course the ancient Chinese emperor they all the aristocratic family including the European royal families today they still wear either uh, these threads or a ribbon to show their uh, royal line okay it all depend it all uh, came down from the beginning when they believe that their line goes up all the way to the de deity it is a divine lineage okay so it also uh, this is a Chinese word the uh, Hai and this is definitely you know marking you know the lineage itself or the other way is this is an ancient Egyptian hieroglyph and this is uh, the mark of a human being you know the flow you know from a source you can understand it as the Sun too so you will see that this concept you know comes all you know only when you sit in a temple you see all this flow so everything either it is liquid or it is just light or air, either it's thread they all combine to mean you know um, uh, this the same message so this acceptation actually functions a lot in our human mind so 
And next one I want to show is to show you how um, common it is, you know, that uh, nowadays we, we try to trace our genealogy, but this is something actually uh, happened a long, long time ago. These are some of the symbols that the ancient use. I, first of all, they either use the foot or the head to mean the origin, or sometimes they use the eye of the mouth, which it also means the door where you came from, okay, or they will use the spring, the well or the river source you know as a means of showing the genealogy and or they will use the thread which is one of the first human technology and on this side I will show you some ancient uh, pict pictograph you know writing to show you this is a Chinese word either the, the, the foot the head uh, the foot and the head is both right there and and it's all uh, marking the beginning of an action so and or they will show it as an eye you know and or, or the, they show that there's a bowl or the mouth is actually uh, you can understand it as the fountain the worm of the the female or they will show it as the spring the fountain or they will actually draw it out and have the water flow and this is uh, the thread itself all these objects you know all these uh, themes will be used you know uh, one way or the other to uh, indicate you know the origin and of course in the um, Western world you will see that the leader of the alphabets A and the B both actually uh, why is it leading the alphabetic uh, cycle it also chase back all the way to the uh, the ancients you know uh, tracing of their or or origin or the other um, either the West will start with A and B in even uh, the word Abu Abi uh, the father is also uh, the combination of these two sounds or the other the uh, system will be using the K just like the Sanskrit system uh, so the ancient always either use the A as the start or the K as the start um, but I already spoke about it if you want to uh, uh, understand it more you can uh, type in the program name basket starfish our language core into the into Google you will find my last 45 uh, episodes so uh, a lot of them will be talking about each alphabet separately okay but today I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to the the third one about the spring the well the river source and the alphabets related will be this four alphabet this O P Q R. why are they all joined together you know in the Latin system there's always a reason uh, another time I will talk about L M N L M N is closely linked with water but the O P Q R. this four alphabet are closely related to to the source okay so so I will carry on uh, underneath. So I will talk about the reality in writing. First of all, um, you will see the ancient uh, proto sinaitic You know, it. Uh, this uh, this is the representation of the alphabet R sound. Okay, so uh, they be, they know that this is Ras in the Semitic world. Ras is, means the head. So they actually draw the head. This become the representation of the sound R, and the Phoenician will have it uh, simplified like that, and the uh, linkage will be between a human head and an animal head because you know the way they write in R gradually become faster and faster because it takes a lot of time to draw a human head it will be much more easy you know because also because of the uh, herders begin to uh, pay a lot of attention to the position of a, of a ram and that's the, also the time where uh, the uh, uh, astrolo astrology Aries took uh, a very important role in human history so this ram itself become you know the prototype of the uh, Greek writing R so this become the Greek word R don't look, look at it as the Latin this is an R okay not a P okay so you will see that either the rat the human head or the ram we both you know still up to this day it still start with an R so also, I'll show you again and again, Alexander the Great, you know, because that period, you know, the ram is so much in fashion that he also put in the on the ram a horn, you know, to show his uh, his uh, repose as the leader of the whole herd. OK, so, um, of course, you know, in Latin, this words carry on. Rex is the king, of course, the head of the tribe or in uh, Sanskrit it would be Raja uh, up 
to this day in English will be royal, okay, the ray. So you will see the owls consistently, you know, appear in the headward. And then um, I will show you uh, reality uh, comes and then uh, the word owl that you write. And also this is the symbol of areas, you know, the first, you know, horoscope. And that actually become your writing of the alphabet owl in the Latin system. But how about the capital? How, where uh, does it come from? Um, first of all, I have to break it down into two parts. First of all, they took from the Greek part, you know, which is the head, or right here, the ras, the head, and then they add a little tail right there. And of course, you know, it actually uh, coincides with the Latin word radis, which actually means the root, you know. So once again, the head and the root both exist in the same alphabet, exactly like on the eastern side, the Chinese writing, the head and the foot exist in the same thing. And uh, interestingly, you know, in a very colloquial way, we have a way of saying head, foot, you know, and, and actually we reverse it. We say, you know, the foot head. When we say foot head, it actually means the antecedents, uh, you know, of a person. So it actually indicates the source of a person, the genealogy of a person. So all this, you know, will become our, uh, sh I show you because I show the parallel between, happened between the East and the West. They were just hidden among all these things. These things are never written in the uh, dictionary because they are, they existed colloquially and they existed as folk custom. Okay? Okay, so uh, I will go on with the Latin system and the Q and that explain why the Q is written this way because since they put a, a tail uh, on the on the head you know borrow from the Greek to uh, to express the, the also the root word and then they also put another tail right here to indicate this word in Latin quelle actually means the source and if you uh, you don't believe that you will actually see the O the O actually you know it in the formation of the Latin word Either the O's means the mouth, which where is something came from, or actually it's oracle, which of course the origin, the source. So they actually combine this to put the O, you know, the origin, and then put the tail out there, or the flow of whatever coming out from there to mean the source become the word quelle. So every single sound of the alphabet actually had the meaning at that time. So how about this? You know, the word that you understand as P is actually borrowed from the R in Greek, you know, so, but then by this time, you know, the Romans use it in a different way. Of course, you know this word pater or pater, and then it is all actually means the head. Of course, you know, when you say the head, it can also means, you know, your father as well, other than the tribe, you know, the king, it can also mean just your father. It depends on how big the tribe you are describing. So that explains the reason why in the Latin system, LMN, which is closely related to the water, and then OPQR would be all linked together because these are all the words that's related to the source word. So um, um, human uh, language become more and more interesting because we begin to have different words to uh, describe different situations. So that's how literature comes into place, okay? so. And of course, you know, other than the source, the root, the R still, you know, exist, you know, very clearly in all other uh, system, uh, like the Ra's head in the semantic system and the Rex as the king. Okay, so um, I, I will I will explain also a little bit. Then you will ask me why is it? Then what happened to the East? You know, what about the Chinese? And then uh, I will I will show you this. You know how uh, trade actually affects the choice of the word by that time, you know, about 2,000, 3,000 years ago, I think the uh, division of labor is already uh, very um, uh, obvious. At that time, you know, um, the uh, why is it very important? Because the Greek were actually animal herders, you know, in a very strong sense. You will see that the animal become the A, you know, through the Phoenician, and then this word become the R, and then 
uh, actually it made up the word areas and, and the, the, the first horoscope sign and and this is the division between the east and the west by that time okay and then the Chinese also you know in the writing itself we have tons of this uh, horn animals appearing I show you when I was explaining the A word and somehow you know this become the alphabet A but this uh, word in, in Cantonese we still maintain a very ancient sound ah uh, okay so ah uh, also means you know the action uh, the beginning of action of course but how do we express the word ancestor or descendant in another sense maybe the leader or the follower we have these two symbols as you can see you know we still use those you know animal horn as the unseen energy they are still very very alive because they came down from very very ancient time but by this time we actually adopted different sound to 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 express them uh, one is you know when we say the leader we actually use this the, the sin and then if it's a descendant of the follower we use the H system the how and why is it because at this time we are very uh, concerned you know the Chinese actually paid a lot of attention in uh, making of threats and you know the ancients were already you know in invented you know the weaving of silk and everything by this time the Chinese must have paid a lot of attention in weaving business so um, a lot of the sound adopted even the, the symbols were used you know in the ancient way but we ad adopted a lot of words related to the thread making so we use the concept of the thread to express ourselves so you have to understand the tray actually become the tradition. Uh, why do you say that's, that's a tradition? When a group of people, mainly of shepherds, so uh, a lot of the word will be concerning about animal. So uh, when a group of people uh, pay a lot of attention to making clothes and weaving, of course their word will be closely related to making threads. So um, this is how the, the tray become the tradition. Now uh, we don't follow the tray of our fathers. We we all go to different direction but you have to understand even to up to the 18th century or even the beginning of 19th century uh, people actually follow what their father was doing for generation and generation they were always following the um, the same trade okay so um, as I said you know uh, the difference between the choice choice of the sound and the wood is because one group was the weaver the other group was actually more of the herder so this is the beginning that we see some kind of differences but if you see the core of the original idea and the concept they were still exa exactly the same okay so I will go on to you know to look at the obsession of the uh, sources of course you will see that in again as I said the origin and the quelle if I follow the Latin source to explain the word Q and uh, you will have the uh, even the German word still you know it spells exactly the same perhaps the German pronounce it a little bit differently both the same word for the Latin and for the for the modern German, they all mean source or spring or well, okay? So, but for the Chinese, there's a very interesting word. Become, uh, it, the writing is getting a little bit uh, complicated these days, but if I pronounce it to you, you have to use your ears, okay? So it actually says kill, okay, kill. But um, you can actually ignore your eyes now. You can understand it as a Q. Uh, it's just a tonal difference. When I say Q in Cantonese, it actually means a hole, an opening or a key to something. This is also a very ancient word that points to the source of something, okay? So even the writing become complicated. And then I started to look, you know, because the top part I understand since ancient time, it means a hole. But what is this? part you know I, I separate the word and I start looking at the ancient dictionary this part actually means the flow of light you know and and, in, and and plus the top part which means a hole it means a flow of light from a hole look at that if I recreated it in the ancient way it I can actually write it this way exactly like what you see in that uh, Yemeni temple in the darkness or I can transcribe it into the ancient Latin way 
only that I just add a little bit more of flow out from that old shape okay so the sound is corresponding to exactly the same meaning the Q and the quelle and the Q okay so this is exactly the ancient search for their source and then um, the next one, I will I will give you a number of more than English words to let you see how interesting this concept still live these days. And this is the Chinese word Q, and this is Q, and this is Quelle in Latin means saw or German means saw spring or well. Look at this. Um, this is a Q waiting to enter the. The Paris, you know, in, in, in Paris, you know, the, the Tower of Paris. So you will see that this is actually, if I, I boil it down to a simple symbol, and you will see that a Q is exactly, it's conceptually the same thing, a line attached to a source, exactly what you see in this picture here. Or you can understand it as a Q. A Q is a line or signal link to something that gives you an idea of something. Or you can look at this. This is what you call a cue. It's a ball of a thread. Also, it's a line that links to a thread. Okay? So, or you can understand it as a clue. It's a, also a line or signal link to something. So, look at this. Q, 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 Q uh, clue. You can see that this is just a shifting of the sound, but visually in modern days, we just spell it differently just to distinguish them. Okay? So, um, okay. I will stop right here. Um, I think this is the first week that I can finish it kind of uh, more or less in, on time because I want to spend uh, a little bit of time to explain it slowly. I have been going very, very fast, you know, these days and uh, uh, I hope I, you have understood uh, my way of showing you how the human concept changed from the reality to uh, some very uh, subtle concept in our head, how the water can be uh, merged with the light flow and merged with the, uh, the, the threads that we weave, that we trill, and the three actually three concepts become the same concept in a human concept to become our lineage so this is all in literature it is very easy for you to understand either we talk about the water flow or the line flow or the of the sunlight flow we all uh, can link easily to our ancestor or our human origin so um, this is all very easy in a human uh, concept and and, um, and I will want to go back a little bit to, sh to show you this one right here. Okay, since I have a little bit of time. And, okay. Here, okay. Okay, look at it again. Because the uh, bull head become A and the owl stand right this day is Roger, still kind of a head. And then, of course, Raja is the king, okay? So Alexander the Great naturally is wearing this throne. So again, Aries is the first, you know, uh, lining uh, of the, the horoscope. And, and this again, on the Chinese side, you will see exactly the same, the unseen energy leading the foot, and which carry exactly the same sound in the East. And uh, for us, you know, it becomes the ancestor. And even to this day, when you say pedigree, still it is closely related to the foot, you know. But then, of course, you are talking about the foot of an, a, a bird, a crane. And it has a lot to do with with um you know the birth that brings the baby as the as the legend goes so a lot of these things are actually you know uh, weaved in and out with a lot of different legends i will i will come out again and um yes a lot of the legend goes in and off so if we want to understand language we cannot just go uh use you know the etymology just as a straight line as a family the indo-european just go to the lab to the Greek to the Latin so we build a kind of hierarchy but I hope today you have seen that actually English is not as new as you think that they are so um, 
we are all standing on an equal ground and uh, I hope uh, also uh, if you have any question please do type in the basket starfish our language core uh, on the YouTube you can find all the last episodes in the last 45th episode and you can watch it again and be patient with me and thank you all very much for staying with me and I hope I can get this Asian uh, point of view across because a lot of the academics are, are not really from China and a lot of the people were actually using Mandarin as the base what I'm proposing is using different ancient Chinese dialect Chinese dialects were actually more ancient than the Mandarin and uh, or, or I shouldn't say that and only by combining the using of different dialects and Mandarin we can find the truth and we have to look and also all those legends to combine everything together to find the truth and uh, basically this is what I am trying to say and next week you know I will also go into a little bit to let you see how I travel I stay in very in, uh, remote places to uh, next week maybe I should bring in a little clip you know from for you to see how uh, uh, the shepherds deal with their animal how the B sound and the M sound is actually very very close to each other um, okay so I think basically <laughs> I am I'm good today the first time I can finish you know my slides and that's it um, what else I have to tell you uh, yes I think that's it the B and the M next week I will show you some uh, clips that when I work the climb with the shepherds okay so you will see how the baby lamb and the mother sheep you know were, were calling each other so it is a very very interesting thing to let you see that when you're in the wild you can actually hear sound very different from you in a very uh, developed place um, a lot of the things you are actually not from books you have to move around to understand how the world really works and thank you very much for watching and that's it for today thank you remember your YouTube okay thank you